of the introduction of skill modules in the CBSE school ecosystem. And uh, we are really happy to have this session on food, or we can say food production, uh, on uh, today's one hour session ahead of us. I will let's like to put in that uh, the food production is just food production is uh, one of the courses that has already been offered by CBSC under hospitality based courses. And as you uh, all know by now that uh, we have tried to uh, take up the skill modules uh, which are aligned to the courses that we are already offering with our uh, CBSC uh, skill and academic uh, subjects. So keeping that in mind, food production, I think we, uh, you know that we have it in 9th and 10th also and 11th and 12th. So uh, keeping in line with that, this particular school module will touch on the basics of what is being offered ahead in the courses. So that is one big advantage that the, the, kid, the children would get a feel of what this particular course is all about. And um, I would really uh, like to welcome all the resource persons and panelists who are with us because these are the people who have really, uh, you know, looked into all the aspects in compiling the uh, basic information regarding these uh, modules and they have come out with a beautiful module. I can say if we will start, you know, looking at it and uh, go through the different chapters, you will really enjoy. It. That's the way this whole uh, manual has been curated uh, by the experts who are there with us and they will walk us through how they have been implementing it into their schools so that uh, the others can get uh, an idea uh, on the same aspects from them. Uh, I will not repeat uh, now uh, that how the skill modules need to be implemented, how the teachers should be enrolled and all, because we are into our, um, say, 13th session today. And by now, I think everybody is aware of uh, our circular 48 and what all it contains. But still, if anybody has any uh, concerns, we'll obviously take up uh, in the last. Uh, so please keep your queries ready and just uh, mail us or you can always put it on the YouTube also, because we'll be going through our YouTube uh, uh, participants uh, queries and suggestions and anything which they want to know so i would just hand over the session to mr sandeep so Sethi so that he can introduce the panelists and the resource persons here and then uh, we have uh, one hour of a uh, wonderful interaction ahead of us thank you so much and over to you sandeep Sethi. thank you so much thank you so much it seems i'm a very good evening to all of your present there and it's really exciting and as the sessions are coming towards the end of the first phase. Why I'm saying the first phase? Because the second phase is going to begin after around 25 more manuals will be ready. Of course, that will take around six to eight months. But today is our second last session on the manuals that are being presented. Of course, we walked through the past 12, uh, 11 manuals on pottery, bakery, making of a graphic novel, media studies, block printing, mask making, preservatives, Herbs and Heritage, Blue Pottery, Kashmiri Embroidery, and today is our 12th one on food production. What has been very interesting of all these are that you know, schools will realize that some of the topics are absolutely new. Like yesterday when we were doing Kashmiri Embroidery, there was a lot of feedback coming from people that we've taken them back to the days where they were students, the teachers were students, and they were doing embroidery in school. And as Nithima mentioned, that it's possible that schools have evolved and have picked up some other topics rather than taking up embroidery. But same like, how can we survive without food? I remember one of the sessions I had in a school where the school had those uh, geese in school and rabbits in school. And I told the principal that, ma'am, why don't we, you know, because the Baiji used to make the atta for the rotis, because surprisingly, I thought geese would be very happy having dalia, easy to cook, but they preferred rotis than dalia. So then I told principal, I said, ma'am, why don't we, instead of the Bai making the atta every day, why don't we allow the students on rotation basis, you know, four children at a time every day, last 15 minutes, they enter the kitchen and they uh, need the dough for the rotis. Because that's one process, because maybe Usage Pishai, parents may not be teaching them how to do it, or they may have so many reasons, the need may not be there. So I discussed it in two schools. One school picked it up very seriously. One school of course said that the, most of the children are going to go abroad and there they get ready-made rotis. But you know, ready-made rotis are not going to last forever because you get fed up of the ready-made rotis. This impacts food production, I think, and most of the skills that we are touching up right now, these are life skills. 
if you do not know how to cook and survive, what will you do? You have to know how to make that instant poha. You have to know how to make that instant upma. So while we were designing the food production manual, it was great fun because we were looking at all the things which were easy to do. And so many schools do have these clubs in schools. They have these small small activities where the children are learning how to make food. So all you have to do is just to put that energies and call it now as a food production manual. You can pick it up for any grades that could be level one, level two, level three. Of course, SV Public School coming up has done it for six, seven, eight. But you know, thanks to the national education policy, thanks to CBSE, thanks to Mr. Saha, all that has taken such a beautiful shape. And it is just that the survival without food is not there, and that industry will always be there. And hence, all entrepreneurs are definitely going to be there. So ye to hoi nahi sakta ke iske bagair kisi ka guzara hoga. And we can have so many careers coming up from that, so many things coming up there. So for example, if you already have taken in 11th and 12th food production, it's so easy for you to incorporate there. If you have yeah. home science in your school, that means you already have a kitchen. It's so easy to incorporate there. And every school has got a pantry. Pantry, small size kitchen hota hai. And you can just invest a little more. And as you go through these three manuals, you'll understand what other basic things will be required by you. So today as a guest person, we have called Devya Arora. Devya Arora calls herself as a Mithai Wali from Jaipur. And she has done a graduation. She's done various uh, businesses. but what she found happiness was in food. And she's taken it on a very different level. And when I normally take a lot of help from her because I look at her as an entrepreneur, I look at her as a very balanced, you know, that the right way of dealing with food. And of course, she's got so much to share with children of all levels and of all classes. But uh, right now she's going to bring us to the whole concept. And she was there recently for the... Uh, G20 program, so she could also bring us a lot of input from there as to what she's seen then, what she feels very strongly that schools should be doing regarding the food processes in school. And just yesterday, we were doing some work in NT and we got the statement that 30% of Indian food is wasted, is thrown. Now, can you imagine the volume of 30% of food in India? How much volume is there? And why do we face food that's what Divya is going to bring about. So after Divya, we're going to have SP Public School introduce the manuals. And all the best to everyone. And we hope to see you again tomorrow for the last session on embroidery once again. Thank you so much. Over to Divya. Very good evening to everyone. Uh, namaste. And thank you for this uh, brilliant opportunity, uh, uh, especially Sandeep sir, because he's been my teacher. And uh, one of the initial uh, introductions to food, apart from my mother, was him. Uh, because uh, he, during his uh, classes, uh, when, whenever we completed a session, like 11th or 12th grade, he would have a huge party. We all cooked together. He would ensure that, you know, we were making parathas and cakes and things like that. And we partied together. So the whole concept of community cooking that I learned, my first uh, interaction was with Sa. So I'm here as a, uh, a food entrepreneur and I want to share with you a, a very interesting story. So let me begin with a story about food. Uh, India has tremendous to offer the world when it comes to food. For us, food is just not food, it is Brahma, it's God. Uh, and uh, Anna is treated as Brahma. So uh, Upanishad has a very interesting story uh, that uh, there was a... There was a very brilliant scholar called uh, uh, Shwet Ketu. And uh, he returned after learning from universities and brilliant institutions. He knew a lot. He had tremendous knowledge in various fields. And he comes back to his father uh, called Udalak. And Udalak asks him, so what have you learned? He says, I have learned this and I have learned that. And I have this knowledge from uh, this guru. And uh, Udalak very... Uh, you know, humbly asks him, you've come full of knowledge, but do you know who is the knower? Are you the knower or is there somebody else the knower? So he says, nobody's asked me this question in the university. He says, okay, I'm going to give you the answer 
after two weeks of fasting. So he puts his son on fasting. So the son is very, uh, you know, uh, upset about this whole thing that I've invested so much of my energy in education and come back. And he's my father's asking me, uh, do you know the knower? So any which ways he listens to his father. And after two weeks, when his father goes to him and he asks him, what is the knowledge you have? Who is the knower inside of you? So he begins by reciting certain mantras. But his entire mind is in food because he has been eluded of food for two weeks. And after a few minutes, he just says that, you know, uh, nahi pata, but mere liye Brahma hi anna hai. You know, an, anna hi Brahma hai. And he goes crazy. And that is the moment where, you know, his father says that you've discovered it perfectly that anna hi Brahma hai. That is the knower. So, uh, Taking you from the Upanishads to the Maslow's pyramid, you know, Maslow's law, where the bottom line of Maslow's pyramid is physiological needs, which is food. Until and unless a human being is, uh, is satiated by in his belly, he cannot think of anything else. I mean, emotional needs come later than food. And then you have, you know, the family needs and the economic needs. They all come much later. So the bottom line in Maslow's survival is physiological needs. So um, uh, food for Indians is very different, which the West doesn't know. And I think uh, it's very important for the schools to incorporate this philosophy of the panchabhut or the five elements with which the food is created or humans are created each and every cell in our body is created with these five elements whether it's water earth you know fire the um, the element of air and akash the space and we can incorporate science in this as beautifully you've done in your manuals where you're talking about evaporation, where you're talking about condensation, or you're taking mathem mathematical, you know, uh, uh, contributions of how a recipe must be created if a certain thing goes wrong. So obviously there are multiple, uh, you know, um, uh, segments of education or subjects that you're incorporating in the food. But yes, uh, somewhere adding this philosophy that India gave to the world about how food is and what constitutes food it can really become much deeper and much meaningful in our offerings. So my recent interaction with the C20 G20 summit uh, in uh, Palghar Eco Village last month was an eye opener for me. We had uh, uh, you know people from uh, ministry level coming in uh, as because it's all about policy making. What new policies can be brought in in food because that entire um, conference was on life and food so how critical is food to life and how food impacts our various activities our behaviors so in terms of food production i they even at that level they were talking about how distant our education has become from the producer i mean even today when i was reading a lot of your manuals very brilliantly done uh, one point which I felt is that until the child is, is educated on growing the food, the whole sense of you know, connection to food goes away. So they said that at policy level, all knows how difficult it is to grow food. Because today when we buy food, there is no emotional value attached to it. You're buying food from the market, you bought something, you didn't like it, you just throw it into the bin because there's no emotional value attached to it. There is no, I mean, except for finance, except for the money that you spend, there is no other energy exchange happening there, which is leading to tremendous wastage of food. Even in their uh, midday meal programs, they realized that the students that were coming in, uh, though they were from uh, not uh, too economically strong families and they were eating food every day in the school, the wastage was increasing. And then they involved students at certain level in cooking, as Sandeep sir said, that, you know, involving students in cooking, that led to deduction in food wasted in a very drastic way. So, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, there are multiple opportunities in food uh, when you're looking at scaling them. Uh, being a chef is one of them, as mentioned. 
there are food technologists there are food nutritionists there are people who are specialized in dairy there are people who are doing uh, uh, enhancement of flavors i mean the food industry is opened big time really big time and as uh, we are you know the funnel we are funneling down to specialized foods uh, a lot more science is getting involved uh, you know whether it's wine making whether it's cheese making whether it's dairy um, animal husbandry so uh i mean the sky is the limit uh but yes if we can really uh, ground a child and make him understand the importance of food in terms of emotional value uh the kind of effort that a farmer puts in to grow that food uh, we will be able to uh, i think do a much better job yes thank you so much yes thank you ma'am uh, it was indeed uh, an insight that you have already given regarding our food manual you have already told that what was the purpose of choosing this topic as the food manual um, first of all i would like to thank cbsc and uh, mr biswajit saha sir for giving us this opportunity that we could have you know done justice to the skill education uh, skill education modules and we also wanted to thank uh, uh, the you know entire team of cbsc who have uh, you know gone through our manual and they liked it and they have proposed that we should only introduce it to everybody present here so once once again i thank everyone so begin with i will uh, i would like to share my presentation i hope it is visible to everyone okay thank you so uh, we have made the skill development manual on uh, food manual and why a skill is important we all know that a skill is you know a basic requirement if we are asking a child to you know opt a career because it is going to accompany the knowledge he has for a particular field or a sector without skill he cannot perform better because skill provides him with uh, or you can say equips a child with the leadership qualities critical thinking the attitude of problem solving he becomes an advanced learner and he tries to you know put all the efforts that his mental ability has as well as the physical ability has so that he can perform that work with perfection or try to perform that work with perf perfection so it is we can say that a skill helps a student to grow further in a better way taking everything around him in sync so that he could experience train himself in that manner that he is giving his best to whatever industry he is into so that was the uh, that was the idea that we have understood as a skill and we wanted that it should be there in our uh, manual next we have kept this thing in mind that what nep is demanding nep is demanding a holistic development of a child so that you know again he could be competent enough to deliver his uh, you know capabilities abilities effectively wherever he is in his future endeavors so why food manual already answered by sandeep sir and divya ma'am that why we chose food manual but there were some specific reasons that i would like to share with all of you because food we all know that is the basic thing which every one needs every day thrice a day at least if we are there in a condition good living condition we sometimes do take a breakfast then a lunch then high tea then dinner but at least food is something wherein a survival where the survival of a person depends whether the supply of food is proper or not so that why that is why we thought of that yes uh, food is something that should be uh, you know field where students should be skilled 
not only to serve a uh, serve a uh, serve an industry but to serve themselves also because if a child knows basic cooking he or she can survive anywhere because uh, cooking you know uh, food is also an art which or you can say uh, it is um, an ability that gives you a perfection or that gives you uh, an edge over others you will not be hungry any moment of time if you know how to cook food so that is what we wanted that uh, the children should at least learn about basic cookings now we all have uh, discussed this thing that food is brahma what the ma'am ma said and food is the basic need of life primary need of life because uh, in the primary needs we do take food shelter and uh, clothing but food is comes before clothing and shelter as you all know that an organism's survival scientifically if we talk about organism survival is basically on the food needs because for doing all other things he will be needing energy and that energy he is going to grab through the food that he is going to eat so food is what something i think which is which is having existence till this world is going to be in the existence so if we talk about the food industry food industry as of india only it is a huge industry it is not only talking about the food production but it is also talking about the food preservation packaging and supply of food items you know there is a huge fdi equity inflow every year uh, in our country which supports or which is you know growing day on day so that this industry can turn into a vast and huge industry and most uh, important is that it is a perennial industry now why it becomes a perennial industry we all know that every day everybody needs food to eat whether it is a fruit whether it is a vegetable whether whether it is oil or anything any food item that we use every day has to be there for the you know uh, for our uh, uh, good uh, nutrition nutritional diet that we take so that that is required every day so this food industry now if we are pouring uh, you know such quality that or we are pouring such ideas in a child at the middle age level that is the grade 6 7th and 8th that yes food is something wherein you could you know choose it as a career food industry is something wherein you can choose it as your career after your uh, senior secondary exams then it might be helpful that they could not only serve the society but they could serve the country as good entrepreneurs so the implementation of the food manual at any grade is very easy because as ma'am has already told us uh, neeti ma'am has already discussed that yes we do have a skill subject of food production at 9th and 10th level as well as it has been introduced at 11th and 12th levels also so implementation is not a problem because you have a working area in every school home science labs are there a pantry as sandeep sir told that every school comprises of a pantry with all the basic uh, equipment like microwave otg and uh, an induction plate where you know the food could Uh, food is getting uh, you know hot or tea and coffee is made available to the staff members as well as the children there is canteens in the school wherein also there is a small workplace where the things or the items that are being sold are cooked so the implementation of or uh, implementation becomes easy when you have that working area right there if we talk about the school we have uh, these things uh, with us but a child has an e easy access at home also at home when the child is uh, you know there with the, the parents uh, he or she could learn different techniques of uh, uh, cooking different techniques of cutting different techniques of you know grinding chopping presenting any food item uh, beautifully it can be done at home also so the requirement is there we don't have to uh, you know uh, push a child to buy something or to search for the resources so all the resources 
that are required for the activities undertaken in the food manual are easily within the are easily available and within the reach of the child now if we talk about the safety point of views whether the child is going to be safer while using the gas burner or microwave it is obviously whenever the child is using these equipment at school teachers are there as the caretakers and when they are using at it at home they have their parents or somebody elder to them in presence so that the safety purpose is also not a problem for the children to take these activities into consideration next we have uh, that why this has been uh, the implementation will not be a problem is uh, that we have tried to integrate all the subjects in it that is we have kept it multidisciplinary because when we were putting the layout of the food manual that what content we should choose so that it could be taught to children as hands on activity we kept it totally science we first go, uh, we have first gone through all the chapters of science at 6 7th and 8th so at 6th level only we got the food uh, you know as uh, our basic need and from there only we started incorporating the different other chapters so the base has been kept of science because we talk about in 6th standard all the nutrition uh, nutrients that we take into a balanced diet so that we can be healthy what are the importance of these nutrients to our body which nutrient gives you a specific function or which nutrient gives you uh, a specific health to become uh, to become more uh, you know the body becomes more working and active so when you are cooking you use things and items in proportions that is there are specific quantities that you use kilograms grams a handful a hand span a teaspoon so these all are always the measurable quantities that you use while cooking if suppose a child has to prepare a cup of tea so what is there cup cup of tea means half cup of water and half cup of milk one tablespoon of sugar one tablespoon of tea so it is always measurable now when this simple cooking turns into you know a little complex cooking like baking there we have measuring cups which is which are used to measure the quantities measure the items how much wheat flour to be taken how much you know baking soda and baking powder to be taken what quantity of yeast should be added whether we should yeast add yeast or not everything comes into consideration mathematically we have because this is all colorful what they are doing they are looking at different colors every time they are presenting their dishes whatever they are preparing in beautiful forms and ways so they are going creative they are going innovative so art and craft is also like you know integrated language because we have kept some of the activities like interviewing their grandparents jotting them down and converting them into a conversation interviewing their grandparents regarding the days where they have used you know what all equipment in their kitchens or what their ancestors have used uh, you know as equipment in their kitchens because uh, many uh, you know children come from uh, you know background such background of families wherein they were living in joint families where uh, food for 50 to 60 people was being prepared all together at one place and one big kitchen so this is how uh, language portion has also been covered now social science we have uh, incorporated through that what geographical boundaries we have because we say that india is a diverse country so we have diversity of food as well so we have kept such activities like uh, one of that what are the you know food chains that are available in india the students have to you know look after them and they have to choose one and present it in front of the entire class suppose they choose one uh, uh, you know uh, uh, ccd they have chosen that cafe coffee day is there what what was the founding year of ccd and how it has come into existence and now how many chains uh, or you can say branches it has 
all over the country now like this we also have uh, the indian brands like uh, we have haldi rams we have bikaner walas who are serving people each and every food item at their doorstep so this is how we have kept to social science into integration now these are the front pages of our food manual food manual for 6th 7th and 8th now when we talk about the food manual of grade 6 the chapters that we have included are introduction to the food protection production wherein the child will understand the basic methods that food production comprises of like whatever food item starting from the farmer is sowing the seed the crop is coming out it is harvested it is then uh, you know forwarded uh, to others for packaging or uh, for uh, you know preservation so that it can be used by all of us now next chapter that we uh, we have kept is history of kitchen now history of kitchen talks about that how an old kitchen or an ancient kitchen of you can say roman times or 1800 century or 1900 to 1920 century have turned or grown or developed into a modular kitchen of today so um, there were kitchens where you know uh, like uh, the kitchen of the mughals where in in big pans uh, you know the food was being prepared we all must have seen uh, you know we asked the children to watch a movie called jodha akbar wherein there is a proper scene where the food is being prepared first and then it is served to the king that how huge uh, you know in a great and vast plate it was being served with variety different variety was there that was being eaten so this is how the concept was being told to them they understood that yes it was really huge Uh, to prepare food for such a number of people so next we have also tried to introduce uh, students about the domestic kitchen as everyone knows a domestic kitchen talks about the kitchen of our homes community kitchen communicate uh, community kitchen basically talks about the langar kitchens that we found at gurudwaras temples different temples and mosques commercial kitchen talks about uh, the kitchens of hotel uh, cafe vans cafeterias restaurants wherein they have now each type of a commercial kitchen has separate requirement of the tools and equipment because cafeteria serve you know uh, people of uh, a particular area restaurants then serve a people uh, serve people of you know different backgrounds or different geographical borders so this is how their requirements differ so we just wanted that children should understand that how these three differ with each other because they differ in their workstation they differ in the presence of the tools and equipment they might differ because in domestic kitchen it could be like that all types of food is being prepared whether it is a cake whether it is uh, breakfast whether it is lunch whether it is dinner community kitchen prepare specific type of food like uh, kada prasad is being prepared in the kitchens of uh, gurudwaras then we have a proper food that is served during the day time which is called as langa commercial kitchens could be specific that they could be serving a specific type of food like maybe only drinks are available in a commercial kitchen as we know about nbc ccd or uh, you know mba chai wala who is uh, uh, serving the different types of teas so this is how you can understand the how vast is it going that we now have the availability of tea of different flavors which is made we uh, i think i remember only two types of teas uh, one was prepared using milk then uh, the green tea came into the uh, came into existence but now we have got kesar chai we have got elaichi chai we have got pudina elaichi kesar chai so this is how it is growing immensely so next uh, chapter talks about the tools and equipments wherein we have tried that our students should have a basic idea that all what all types of tools are available in the market that could be utilized by them in their kitchen 
so maybe it is a colander maybe it is a spatula spatulas are also you know there are different types of materials that uh, are being used to prepare these spatulas earlier our mothers i think um, we must have used only the steel made or the iron made spatulas or you know uh, kerchiefs what what we used to call them that was being used to prepare the food nowadays wooden spatulas are there with different designs different styles uh, you know whiskers are there a whisker also has a variety it could have a hand it uh, hand you know turner which can be used to whisk any uh, you know curd or buttermilk uh there are hand whiskers also there are electric whiskers also so we wanted that all the children uh, you know at least should have this basic idea and this basic idea they could take from their kitchen as well where their mothers are using what type of equipments now we wanted that they should understand large kitchen equipments also that how all together pizzas are being prepared for so many people who are ordering also and who are taking it there uh, you know uh, dining in also at the restaurant right so this is how it was happening now we have got dish wash washer also now this dish washer uh, we have got small dish washers which we use at our homes or we have got large dish washer washers also which are used in hotels to sterilize the uh, you know food utensils where in which the food is being served so all these pictures that you can see on the screen are being taken by the students because when we started we gave them this project that you are supposed to uh, you know go for the uh, uh, go to the catalogs and uh, jo hai they have to search for the catalogs of uh, these items and click the pictures they can go and visit the utensil shops where they can find such things next chapter talks about the food what all nutrients are present in food macronutrients micronutrients it talks about carbohydrates it talks about proteins vitamins minerals these all is being informed already they have learnt in science but we wanted a glimpse to be given to them that how it reaches to their body and how does it helps next chapter talks about importance of food and lifestyle because the main purpose of you know uh every parent these days or we as parent is that our child should be healthy the child should not be into more of eating you know junk food so we wanted that uh, the children should also understand that cooking is good but cooking always a junk food is not good so we wanted them to substitute these uh, junk food items with healthy food items so if we are preparing the giving them a task to prepare a chart we wanted them to use ingredients like sprouts pomegranate cucumber so that that chart turns into a healthy chart curd is already there they can use flavored yogurt instead of that if they want some good flavor to it avocado can be used in that so their chart becomes healthy so this is how we were trying to explain children also that uh, eating food is you know liking good food to eat is good but they should also keep this thing in mind that they are supposed to uh, uh, keep their health into consideration so we have also started uh, because we all have yoga and physical uh, exercises at our school but we started the yoga class by telling them that how much quantity of water should be there water intake should be there every day what things they should be take in uh, take in to you know give their body or keep their body free from uh, oxidants so it could work as antioxidant so we guided them to keep a slice of uh, lemon in their water bottle and drink that water whenever they feel uh, uh, thirsty or they are not willing to drink lot of water so this is how we were taking it into now we have introduced basic cooking methods like uh, boiling simmering sauteing frying wherein uh, roasting is also there so we uh, gave the task to class 6 children that you have to prepare uh, you know you have to roast uh, peanuts you have to roast uh, rice flakes and mix them and try to learn that roast uh, why roasting should be preferred over frying 
so this is how they understood that frying includes lot of oil which could be unhealthy for all the age people so they understood that yes roasting is a better option uh, they could uh, you know uh, they could take the makhanas and they could roast them and they learned happily and they also learned the differences so there were uh, the activities were also there wherein they have to prepare sandwich and but we told them to prepare a recipe in their own uh, of their own idea also now I, now i would like to hand over it to alisha ma'am and take it further thank you shanu ma'am good evening to everyone it has been great learning for us in developing the food manuals designing the content and implementing the this skill based subject provided us a lifelong experience the food manuals are the fusion of theory with the activity work the content is easy to understand as lot of illustrations are given with the topics various activities and real life applications and examples are given in every chapter now i would like to give the overview of the manual for class 7 class 7 manual comprises of five chapters chapter 1 maintaining hygiene in a kitchen chapter 2 cooking methods chapter 3 adding values and flavor in food chapter 4 physical and chemical changes chapter 5 water as an important ingredient first chapter that is maintaining hygiene in a kitchen we know cooking is a art and kitchen is our art room so we should take care of our workplace we know the importance of health one aspect of health comes from the food that we eat and the area where it is getting prepared one should take care of a personal hygiene in food production and handling of food if food is free from germs but if a person who is carrying the food who is handling the food is infected he may contaminate the food so one should take care of personal as well as kitchen hygiene various points are included in the content to maintain cleanliness in the kitchen next topic comes as adding flavor to food flavor is an important attribute of food flavors can be added naturally by plant based products and synthetically by chemical based products in our content we added herbs and spices that we use in our kitchen daily herbs and spices add flavor and smell in the food spices are the friends of physician and the pride of cooks it improves taste and smell every herb has a wide range of health benefits student will understand the medicinal aspect of that herb and spice students must know that herbs can be used as a home remedies when we take honey and ginger extract in case of cough syrup we take in case of breathing we use turmeric and we relieve in congestion as well as in tooth ache alisha ma'am uh, yes. some examples in front of you that are herbs and spices hello ma'am can can you hear me uh, just a minute i'm sorry i'm disturbing you at the end of this content students were given the task to interview their mothers and grandmothers about the usage of particular herb and spice this enhance their knowledge improve their communication skills confidence and interpersonal skills coming to the next topic that is identification of physical and chemical changes in the kitchen changes play a vital role in our life and so in our kitchen whether it may be freezing of water chopping vegetables cooking food curdling of milk and number of examples are there that we can pick from our kitchen student will identify the various physical and chemical changes that turn out in our kitchen and analyze it whether it is in whether it comes under the physical change 
or a chemical change. Moving further to the next slide, we included, next slide please, we included the topic water as an important ingredient in our kitchen. We cannot imagine our food. Can we? We cannot imagine our kitchen without water. And even farmers cannot imagine their crop without water. From preparation of food to cleaning the utensils, we need water. Nothing can be imagined with water, without water. Students will understand the importance of water in this chapter. They will learn that water is the main ingredient of food, beverages, stocks, and every food item. Moving to the next slide. Now I'm taking the full food manual of class eight. Food manual of class eight comprises of five chapters. That's chapter one, food enrichment. Chapter two, various cooking methods. Chapter three, organic farming. Chapter four, preservation and packaging. Chapter five, career in food production. First topic that is food enrichment. We know. Next slide. We know that the food that we consume delivers nutrients. And but and but what if if we over process that food? Yes, it loses its nutrients, it loses its value. So adding micronutrients like vitamins and minerals that were lost due to any reason and restore its original value is called food enrichment. Our content includes sprouting, fermentation, and mutual supplementation. Two incomplete proteins together make one complete protein. One example of mutual supplementation is khichdi. Combination of pulses and cereals make complete protein rich diet. We should take care of the ratio of rice of the rice and the cereal, that is five is to one. Various can, examples can be taken from our surroundings of mutual supplementation, like here in this slide, Pediasure, Cyrillic. Our next topic is organic farming. In this chapter, students will understand the term organic farming, its products and yields. They get to know that it helps in maintaining ecological balance as it uses biofertilizers, green manure, and non-chemical pesticides. The main aim of organic farming is to provide super quality and nutritious food. Students will take their learning forward. Previous slide, ma'am. Students will take their learning forward by opting this technique in the real life they can be given the chance of serving the organic farms around them. Next topic is preservation and packaging of food items. Every food item that we bring to our home come in some form of packaging, whether it may be milk, pulses, rice, or oil, and many more. Preservation and packaging improves the shelf life of the food item. It prevents food from bacteria, pathogens, and other contaminants. It makes our storage easy and handling compact. It protects our food from light, moisture, and other harmful bacteria. Our content includes drying, various preservation techniques like refrigeration, freezing, cleaning, smoking, salting, and preservatives. Nowadays, aseptic packaging is in trend. Students had given the chance to explore and search the food items that underwent through drying at their homes. So they come up with different ideas like amla candies, potato chips, drying of mint leaves. We can also conduct a visit to a nearby supermarket or a grocery shop where they can get the opportunity to require knowledge about the packaging techniques. Like Milk is packed in aseptic packaging for longer shelf life. For pulses, PP woven bags are there. All the activities that we have designed so far in such a way that the students can perform at their homes, in their surroundings, and in schools. Students can choose their career 
after learning from this skill based subject to discuss about the career options i would like to invite shanu gupta ma'am over to you, you ma'am thank you alisha ma'am so we have uh, got through gone through the uh, you know manual 6th and 8th 6th 7th and 8th now we'll talk about the career opportunities that we have through food production manuals child can become chef food critic nutritionist food blogger entrepreneur cloud kitchen so now cloud kitchen is in new fashion these days because uh, people are cooking their uh, you know specific specialty dishes from their homes and then they are taking orders online and then they are serving in that so you can have the good flavor and good taste of specific type of food at your comfort level of at your comfort level at your home zone so now i would like to give you some uh, glimpse of how students of svps have come into action so first of all we have got this book called khichdi a symbol of ek bharat shreshth bharat it was uh, you know prepared by one of our late uh, one of our child late uh, savita donwal it was a tribute given to her so this is how now what she has done into it that she has uh, you know uh, found out and narrated the recipes of uh, you know khichdi that is prepared in the 29 states of india so this is how we covered the diversity of food next uh, every year uh, indian institute of hotel management conducts a uh, young chef championship for students of schools or at the college levels and the students of uh, svps are participating with great enthusiasm in it and they are showing their cooking skills by preparing uh, you know very beautiful dishes flavored dishes different kinds of concepts they are bringing into cooking style and presenting and it is uh, my immense pleasure to announce that they come out as champions also they have come out as champions also several times so this was all about from us introducing to you the food manuals thank you thank you thank you so much shanu ma'am and uh, and and just to add to it uh, i would also like to add that apart from the culinary art that you have mentioned as career prospects these are the you know the, it's a wide umbrella one should say the food art or the uh, food production scene is, a, is is an umbrella of careers but there is also one very special uh, you know course you can say or science you can say which we called as food science and uh, india is one of the top 6 countries where it is mentioned that uh, is the best place to study food science and when we talk about food science it it is a, a part of the whole food production scenario but uh, it is different than your culinary art because in the culinary art uh, we understand that we are talking about cooking we are talking about going into the kitchen so there are a lot of aspects like one can be a chef one can be a teacher one can become a food technologist or a food blogger which has really taken up in a big way and uh, i think post covid and uh, even an author so as to say so these are the things that are basically aligned with the culinary art of the uh, particular subject but uh, food science is something that they do it in the labs you know that is taken up in the lab uh, and the linking of the chemical engineering the biotechnology and the biology takes place and when you look at the career prospects uh, visible the food science there are n number of uh, you know prospects available so it, there is a whole plethora of uh, you know opportunities and interest factors associated with it but at the end of the day we are talking about kids we are talking about food as something that they should enjoy uh we should uh, talk about it as a hobby class we should talk about it as something they just do it in the school and they will go back and uh, you know enjoy that with their family with their grandparents and with their uh, uh, well you know uh, siblings so as to say thank you so much and um, is there anything else that uh, divya ma'am want to uh, put in apart from what has already been uh, you know narrated and after uh, one or two minutes of your uh, you know valuable points we would again come in and take up a few questions that have been uh, received by us on the different platforms we have yes ma'am divya ma'am over to you yeah 
So uh, I think you've, uh, Neeti ma'am, uh, touched a very crucial point about, uh, uh, you know, culinary science. So um, even as an entrepreneur myself, as you start scaling your business, uh, you understand the importance of uh, culinary, you know, the science behind the food, keeping it in a certain taste value, the flavors to be maintained, uh, you know, the technology aspect that's gone into food. I mean, it's now called food technology. So you have food technologists, uh, across and uh, it's a very very interesting domain to be in because you see how the food behaves and even for children you could have very interesting activities uh, you know by just adding a certain uh, you know ingredient to a existing food how it changes its flavor its color immediately so um, that brings in a sense of curiosity in the child at a very young age and uh, this is uh, definitely an arena which uh, the world will look up to India and is already looking up to uh, because we know our food very well. Uh, we really know how, uh, you know, the importance of food is and yet keeping the ethics and the values alive because there's so many plant-based chemicals that have started coming in. So this whole marriage of food and technology and science, uh, I think, uh, would be a brilliant way to open up, uh, uh, you know, N number of career options, uh, uh, for children. Uh, I've used it in my uh, industry and we've seen tremendous change when a technologist comes in, how the food starts stabilizing, how the flavors start enhancing. So uh, thanks for touching that, uh, Neeti ma'am. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we have one uh, very important question that is coming in and any one of you can take that call. They say that uh, is the availability of kitchen or a home science lab or a food production lab uh, an essential part of taking up this particular module in their uh, schools? So and, and, and if at all it is important, uh, what are the financial aspects associated with it to take up this particular model in the school? Uh, and that means so for all the three, uh, level one, level two and level three. So any, uh, Shanu ma'am, if you can uh, just answer that. Yes, ma'am. It is not necessary that you need a lab because uh, every school has uh, home science as their subject and it is mandatory to have that lab in their school campus. If still it, it is not present infrastructurally, any room could be assigned and it does not require any you know, uh, you know, cost of high level or high level investment to take this module because as we have told that the school very well has a pantry. Therein they have a gas stove, a cylinder, uh, you know, and what all other things that we have, uh, you know, taken into consideration or you can say that uh, the activities that we will be undertaking with the children according to the module are not like that, that require any hefty investment from the school side. They can be very well done, performed during the classroom sessions also because chopping, cutting, mixing, for all these, they, the children can have uh, the equipment from their homes. It is not necessary that any, uh, you know, large working station like a commercial kitchen is required for undertaking the activities. It is just what uh, has been kept in the module is just to give an insight that what all they can observe or they can have a look all around once they are into the food industry. So that was the basic, uh, you know, a uh, point that we have kept in mind while preparing the modules. I hope uh, I, the qu query must have been resolved. Yes, that was a wonderful answer, really. Uh, and and uh, the, uh, this particular query was linked with another query of the same time, wherein they say that although the uh, CBSC circular has mapped the existing resources and the existing teacher that can take up this particular yes, module, yes, yes. still, still uh, is, it, uh, is it a basic requirement that the uh, faculty or the teacher should be, you know, knowing the culinary art form uh, of the food production or anybody who has an interest can uh, be able to deliver these, uh, you know, uh, modules in the schools uh, as such yes, to the yes, students. Uh, uh, this, this, this can easily be done, ma'am, because all teachers are, uh, you know, good cooks. They all do, uh, whether it is a science teacher, maths teacher, it has no, you know, disciplinary boundaries for a teacher to be a cook. So as we have already, as you have already mentioned that we are the only guides for them to take these modules in our schools. So 
uh, every teacher can guide them train them learn them or uh, you know specifically there are few teachers in our schools wherein they have an expertise in such areas they are good at baking they are good at culinary art they are good at presenting they are good at chopping and you know trying different flavors to different uh, dishes at every point of time if suppose it is just a, a potato vegetable but different teachers prepare that potato vegetable with different styles each time because they are feeding their children at home also so ultimately they are the mothers so i think this can be taken by any teacher because all of them all of us do know the flavors of food the items or whatever prerequisites are there to take this module into the school are available the resources are available okay thank you so much i think i, I have my colleague jyoti ma'am here she would also like to put up a query jyoti ma'am over to you thank you niti ma'am good evening everyone good evening uh, ma'am chandan i want to know ma'am uh, what are the impacts of nutrition literacy on children's behavior Ma'am, nutrition literacy, you know, certainly affect the behavior of children because if suppose the child is in habit of eating lot of junk food, right? So the body language, uh, the child might always be lazy because you know the junk food it takes time to get digested. So once the metabolism is not active, although children have good metabolism, uh, metabolic rates, they do digest everything very fast, but eating you know regularly could harm their health because it is not good uh, that lot of uh, you know white flour things should be eat uh, eaten by the students so it does affect the growth of a child it affects its uh, mental ability to a certain extent not completely but to a certain extent a child drinking lot of water every day eating sprouts a protein rich diet if the child is taking the growth is good the child takes interest in whatever uh, activities he or she is participating fine thank thank you so much ma'am another question that is uh, come around is um, i think it makes sense also they say that the kids are in 6th standard or 7th standard and uh, they are a little small for something like going going into a uh, cooking where in the fire or the burners and the other uh, such electronics are involved so they are saying ki, did these manuals have that limitations wherein a fireless cooking is uh, is been uh, possible or the ingredients that are being shown can work out without uh, putting that uh, perspective in mind yes ma'am that could be easily done because at uh, level 6 we have kept only such activities which does not require you know the child exposure of the child to a gas or a burner directly it is just the roasting so during sixth standard wherein the child is very small as i have already put this point when i was introducing the manual that safety uh, comes first and it has been kept into consideration because all the activities are going to be performed either at school or at home so they will have somebody to uh, you know uh, they will be under the observation of some elder person right if they are using the gas burner or stove only roasting is such uh, is that activity wherein the gas burner is required but we have not kept it for 6 standard it is going to be for 7th and 8th students fine thank you i think divya ma'am has something to yes uh, yes, uh, yes i has... mean uh, induction plates are great uh, alternative to fire you know cooking because we we have been using induction plates uh, at a lot of places because in hotels uh, there are closed areas where you can't use fire so induction plates are a great options uh, the children are very good with electrical gadgets and um, they get very friendly with uh, induction plates at a very early age uh, so i think that could become a part of your manual uh, you know induction plates are something that could be incorporated also i want to add something to jyoti ma'am's uh, point on nutrition so we did a very interesting activity uh, about how much life your food has does your food have life or is it dead already so uh, things like when they see the color of the food changing during the phase of time or you know the growth in the food like when a sprout is sprouting and it's growing that clearly in- introduces the concept of life in food to children and uh, when they know that something they're eating has life uh, the whole concept of nutrition changes for them because 
they believe what they're eating is uh, has has life and energy in it so uh, doing a lot of salad workshops i've done salad workshops with children in the schools also and doesn't involve much cooking you know it just involves mixing yes. cutting and uh, the whole okay. sensory experience yeah. of using herbs and uh, is very is is very interesting for children and that brings them uh, and the color option when you're mixing a lot of colors so uh, as interesting as the food can look because when we eat we eat it with our eyes first and then with our other senses okay. so uh, if we just make it interesting i think children for them nutrition will never be a challenge yes thank you thank you so much for uh, this wonderful information and i'll tell you we have a wonderful participations here here because there are so many people who are coming out with their experiences we have uh, dhanu rekha ma'am and charu arora shrivastav they are telling that we are doing this sort of an activity in a school and wherein we are uh, doing a fireless cooking with our uh, kids at all levels we have another um, ma'am gayatri vedya uh, vardharajan she says that uh, for 6 7 then eighth we are uh, making an annual uh, competition which is uh, termed as cooking without fire and it has a massive participation and uh, not only the kids but i think the parents are equally enthusiastic to get to the uh, you know this particular uh, annual event and uh, you know you can tutor their kids or train their kids to participate and uh, do a wonderful job with it so um, i always say that in our school system we are all doing these activities so these manuals or these skill modules are nothing which has come suddenly out of nowhere but it's just that we are trying to formalize it we are trying to put it in a perspective that you know it becomes also a, a little academically oriented where we know what we are talking about we get into the academics part also and practical uh, orientation is a must which uh, which already is happening in so many ways in our schools uh, already so uh, that was uh, one very good observation that the others have put in and uh, one of vijay lakshmi also says we also done the same during our science exhibition so uh, there are a lot of people who are you know uh, echoing your thoughts and echoing uh, what you people are discussing here on the platform visibles these manuals so i think we already uh, into our uh, one hour session that is already uh, you know it's 57 jyoti ma'am do you have any other uh, observation that you want to share with us or we can call it a day to day Fine. Oh, so uh, I think uh, we should uh, now wrap up our session for today at least. There might be more sessions uh, in store for us, and I might uh, you know think about uh, as somebody has suggested that we should also go into these modules and move around with the careers prospects and uh, the different things that can be worked on uh, these sessions. So these are something that can be looked into. And thank you so much for being with us, all the resource persons, Devya Ma'am, especially and. Deep Sethi sir, and uh, it has been a wonderful one hour with all of you. And uh, thank you so much. Have a great. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank and you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.